<clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, sick as a dog, hopped up on cold medicine. Wasn't going to stream today. This is all Alyssa's fault. There she is in the chat bragging about it. But I do have this cold new t-shirt from uh, Andrew from Iowa, which is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. But I'm such a professional. I'm still here for you anyway, despite having a cold. And not just any cold. This is a man cold. So I don't want to hear it from any of you non-men. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. That's it. All right, let's get this party started, shall we? Bring, see, I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. We are here in the case of Monique Cooley versus Jasmine Jackson, case number 23-09874PH. This hearing is being recorded on Zoom and live streamed on YouTube. And today is the time and place set for an evidentiary hearing on whether or not the respondent, Ms. Jackson, violated a protective order uh, protecting uh, petitioner Ms. Cooley. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to invite Ms. McNabb to place your appearance on the record. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Lord McNabb on behalf of petitioner. Very good. And uh, Ms. Jackson, you're here um, without an attorney. So would you state and spell your full name for the record, please? Uh, and you're muted, Ms. Jackson. Hello? Now I can hear you. Go can ahead you hear and state me? Full, your full name I'm for the sorry. record, please. First name, Jasmine. Last name, Jackson. J-A-S-M-I-N-E. Jackson, J A C K S O N. Very well. You can kind of see why I had Jackson. to do this, right? And the way the hearing will go today is uh, Ms. McNabb is here from the prosecutor's office. She'll present a uh, petitioner's I'm sorry, case. It's a, little, it's a little hard hearing. Okay, I'll get a little closer to mine. Maybe I'll uh, maybe make it a little louder. Uh, I Ms. Ms. McNabb will present a petitioner's case. Uh, she's uh, here from the Kent County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, she'll do that by calling witnesses. You will have a chance to ask any witnesses Ms. McNabb calls uh, questions in a cross-examination type um, format, which usually are short kind of yes or no type questions. And then uh, uh, you'll have the chance after Ms. McNabb presents witnesses to present any witnesses or testimony that you'd like to present. Uh, on your own behalf, you will be uh, cross-examined by Ms. McNabb if you testify or if you put a witness on to testify. Uh, all that being said, uh, Ms. McNabb, why don't you lead us off? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Ms. Cooley. Very well, Ms. Cooley, would you raise your right hand? Can oh, you and Ms. Cooley, you are uh, muted. Oh, yeah, you're all to unmute. Thank you. Oh, you're still muted. There we go. <laughs> You solemnly swear or affirm that your testimony today will be the truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Very good. You may proceed, Ms. Ma'am. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ma'am, could you please state your name for the record? My name is Monique Cooley. Just listen to this. Uh, and uh, Ms. Jackson, um, you're going to have to mute uh, if you're going to talk at the same time or if you want to talk in the background. Otherwise, we'll hear you and it'll interfere with my recording of the hearing. So either... You'll have to mute if you want to have conversations off the record or uh, not have the conversation. So Fair uh, enough. continue, Ms. McNabb. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Cooley, how do you know Ms. Jackson? Um, I know Ms. Jackson. She's been having an affair with my ex-husband, soon to be ex-husband. So she's been having an affair with him. Okay, do you have any uh, relationship with her outside of that? No, never. Okay. Um, do you recall when you obtained a PPO or did you obtain a PPO against her? I did. And do you recall when? I re retained it October, like the 4th of October. Okay. If, if I told you the judge signed it on October 5th, does that sound right? That does. Okay. And to the best of your knowledge, was that PPO served on Ms. Jackson? Um, my friend tried to serve the PPO to her. And when she tried to serve it to her, I guess she tried to throw the PPO back to her and said she gave sent me a text message out the same day saying that um, 
the uh she received the PPO and she, if I want to play foul that she will um do I will be receiving my PPO in the mail. That's what she told me. So she was gonna go get one on me. She Can I say the words that she said or sure. I need for you to tell me what went on. That I'm I'm not on that whole shit. I'm not with that whole shit. Me that. She, based on your knowledge, Ms. Jackson had the PPO and was aware of it. Yes. Uh, okay. I thought she was talking to me. I apologize. All right. Uh, where are my notes? Okay. And what led you to um, apply for this PPO against Ms. Jackson? Um, she had been calling me numerous of times. She's been texting my phone. She rides past my house numerous of times. She's threatened me and my family. She told me that she had a gun and would do something to me and my family. So I felt that the need, my life was in danger. And I felt that I needed the reason to go get me a personal protection order. She even told me that she wished that I had life insurance on me and my family. Okay. And so when you were first getting these calls, how did you know that they were from Ms. Jackson? Um, like I said, my husband, I had a GPS tracker on him and I didn't know who address it was at first. This girl, is, I'm going to go back. She assaulted me in Woodland Mall. And a situation happened. She fought me in Willie Mall and she tried to press charges when she was the aggressor. So they never even pursued charges on this case. So I didn't never know who she was. I never knew who this young girl was because she's a young girl. like. And so I had a GPS tracker on my husband and it led me to that address. And I wanted to know who it was at the time. So I left my phone number inside of the um inside of her door when I went over there. And she, from that time on, anytime, whatever situation they had going on, cause I never even knew her. She's calling my phone nonstop, threatening, threatening, threatening him, threatening me. It's just got so out of hand that I had to be aware of my surroundings. When I go places, I run into this girl. She's popping off at the mouth, ready to attack me, do different things. So I fear for my life. I, I fear for my life. Okay, um, I want to talk to you about what happened on December 31st. Do you rem remember that day? Yes, I remember that day clearly. Okay, can, can you tell me what happened that day? Um, I was I, I was at home and I received a text message to my first, I got three missed calls. I'm like, hello? She like, Nikki, this jazz. I'm like, what do you want calling my phone? Quit calling me. There's no reason to call me. She like, yeah, um, she she got to talking, just talking so much stuff. I called the police with her on the phone. She was like, I don't give a fuck about no no PPO. Bitch, I'll kill you and your husband. These are, mm. She was on the phone saying this stuff while I merged the police in on the phone call. So then after that, I started receiving text messages. This young lady even sent me a picture of her having sex with my husband. And what, what did those text messages say? I'll read the text message to you right now. I see why you mad now. Go suck his dick, bitch. That bum ass nigga who steal for a living just was at the store stealing yesterday. That's who you love. Y'all both lame as hell. He a booster stealing everything for them kids. Was just stealing that dicks yesterday. All them outfits you seen is a real dummy. What I know you don't get niggas at all. That's why you got a son for a husband. I am done another year being a nigga doormat. For you. Happy New Year. That's my nigga. I just gave him back. I was tired of him being at my house. I have it right here. And then what uh what on what date did you receive that text? <laughs> I received that text December 31st. Okay. Um, it does does Miss Jackson have any legitimate reason to contact you? There's no reason you should contact me. I'm not your friend. I'm not nothing. I don't care okay. what he got and going on. Just okay. I'm I'm barely holding on here, Cindy though. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry. Well, I have a chance to voice my opinion. I'm, I can still be patient. I'm just trying to wonder if I have a response or not. Yep, you're going to have a response and a chance to ask any questions that you might have for Miss Cooley. Okay, thank you. And uh, and Miss Cooley, um, have you ever contacted Miss Jackson? Um, like I said, I left my phone number inside her mailbox, and I mean in her door. And when she talked to me on the phone, certain situations, because I didn't know that he was 
even having an affair with this girl. So when she called my phone before, but yeah, I had had a conversation with her before prior. But when it got real serious to knowing that he he was at home, then that's when the, the all the text messages and just so like delusional stuff started coming to me. Like this is like she needs to be in pine rest if you ask me. Okay. Um and then have you contacted her directly or indirectly since no, this PPO has been placed? No, I don't contact. No, I have no contact with that girl. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Very good. Um, and Ms. Jackson, do you have any questions for Ms. Cooley? Um, I don't necessarily want to communicate with her. I would like to just voice my opinion when possible or voice no, my no i'll give you a chance to make a statement on the record when it's your turn to present your side of the case but i got to get through miss mcnab's case first uh miss mcnab do you have any additional witnesses or evidence at this time i do not your honor thank you all right now uh we'll move to you miss jackson uh i'm going to first swear you in miss jackson if you'd raise your right hand oh, do you solemnly <laughs> swear or affirm that your testimony today will be the truth and nothing but the truth absolutely nothing but the truth very good and uh miss jackson um go ahead and make your statement at this time if you'd like okay your honor first i would just like to say it is very intimidating very scary that this woman okay. will manipulate the courts the way that she is especially when i have so much evidence proving my case i have never threatened this woman as far as you know with a gun or her family or anything, you know what I mean? There's nothing that her family has done to me that would make me feel that I would have to get revenge or anything on her. Honestly, this situation is just a manipulation. You know, I did send you a letter with a lot of evidence, excuse me, I'm not sure if you received it yet. I'm ready to show the evidence. Um, originally, I was, I placed the PPO order on her. Adrian Cooley, this was back in, um, june i'm sorry may 15th 2023 monique came to my home on sunday may 14 2023 i have evidence pictures to verify she was there she caused a huge disturbance me and mr cooley were asleep at my home she came to my home distressed in, in boxers in in men boxers and house shoes and a t-shirt with no bra i have evidence again to prove what i'm my story um, she came to my home. She banged on my door. What, what date are you saying that occurred on, uh, Ms. Jackson? This, about? Was, this occurred on May 14, 2023. There was a police report that was made as well for the disturbance. She came to my home. She was very aggressive. My neighbor next door had to step in to pretty much, you know, stop everything from escalating. The police were called because she entered my home and the police reported said that she entered my home, but she exited before you know the police arrived your honor i have this woman really trying to terrorize my life because mr cooley she cannot control the actions of mr cooley he's a grown man i understand there had been an affair going on but at the end of the day you know what i mean i'm not the only one who's under overstepped boundaries and i've always been single i've never been married so this has not been my issue the only reason why this woman is continuing to try to pursue charges against me is because she is very upset about the situation I have just had another police report that was filed on Sunday. I can give you the number. It's too early for me to give you the report, but I can give you the case number. This woman came to my home while she has a PPO on me, and she pretty much called the police to my home because she thought Mr. Cooley was here. There were three police officers that came to my home. I had it came outside to talk to them. They explained the situation. I have a live recording of the police officer telling me she told Ms. Cooley it does not look good for you to be on her premises when you have a PPO on her. Also, Your Honor, I just placed another police report for last Friday. Monique Cooley, her daughter, she has two daughters. I don't know their last name, Janaya and Nevaeh. I have all type of verification. I've been, you know, this is an open investigation. She drove these two young ladies over to my home to steal my surveillance camera on Friday because she felt like I would not be able to prove my evidence. I have a witness who, you know, they saw her, they heard her voice. She did not get out of the car. But my neighbor, because she is familiar with Miss Cooley after everything that's occurred at my residence, she's told me that Miss Cooley drove these two young ladies over. They they actually stole my surveillance camera. I have a 
open investigation going on. So what this woman is trying to do here is she is trying to assassinate my character because she does not like me based upon the situation, which I understand. I have never threatened her. I have never come to her home. She cannot provide any surveillance footage of me being at her home. I'm going to show you footage of her being at my home on multiple occasions. And it's to the point I'm afraid for my life. My son cannot play outside because this woman comes to my home on a regular basis. And for her to pretty much come to my home while she has a PPO on me is just to the point where I feel like I can't do anything. You know, I feel defeated here, Your Honor. It is just not fair to me, the circumstances. I'm a college student. I'm also pursuing a small business. I have a child that I'm trying to take care of. I do not disturb this woman. I am not a violent person. I do not do any of these things. So if I can show you my proof that this woman has been harassing me and that she is the harasser, I, ha I can get to that right now well, we're not gonna because that would go more towards either uh taking away the ppo or second uh that would support a ppo we right. have this footage of her at my house right here sir this is one picture of her at my also oh, uh, your honor i would object to any surveillance footage as i have not been provided it and have not had a chance to review it this is another another yeah, footage of her you know miss jackson at this time uh what uh because the you know the issue is the question of whether or not you violated the one that's in favor of her i'll hear your testimony that she is provoking this by um showing up or uh trying to intimidate you on the other side but i don't need to see the uh surveillance I understand. just testifying all way it i understand your honors i was never served a ppo the woman that she claimed served me a PPO, wrote on the court papers that she served me a PPO by Coach Lane, but my surveillance camera shows this woman at my house when I was not there, so I just feel like if she actually did come to my house, why would you lie? Because Miss Cooley drove her to my home. I caught them when I was leaving, when I was on my way home. I seen her parked on my premises, so she went out of her way to try to drive this woman to my home to serve me a PPO when that's a violation itself, you know? This woman is clearly playing games, and it's just, it's just very unfortunate. Okay. All right. I think I have an understanding of where you're coming from. Uh, Ms. McNabb, do you have any questions uh, for Ms. Jackson? Uh, yes. Um, Ms. Ms. Jackson, um, did you send Ms. Cooley any text messages on uh, December 31st? Your Honor, I, I'm sorry. No, I did not. I'm not sure what type of game she's playing, how she got these text messages or so. I have a phone number that I can't verify the, the, the text message that was sent, but anytime I text her, ma'am, it was just at the time when me and Mr. Cooley were going through our differences. And since she was harassing me so much, I was reaching out, telling her like, hey, can you please get your husband? He's back over here. I don't want you to be coming to my home. So I was contacting her, but I guess she was already in the process of being done with him. So everything that I was doing was agitating her. I've never caught her phone harassing her. I don't own a gun. I've never, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why she would lie in court like this. This is really insane to me. Okay. So the text message that Ms. Cooley um, uh, read out loud, you're saying that you didn't send that. That is absolutely false, ma'am. I've, I've never talked like that before. Me and her have had arguments, but I have never text her those words. And I don't know how she can prove that that's me, but I can assure you right hand to God that I have not texted her those things. Oh, and have you, have you texted her or called her at all since the PPO was in place? I was not aware when the PPO was in place because again, it was never served. But when I did speak to her at whenever time she did inform me, like, you know, you're not supposed to be calling me. I have a PPO and I'm like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave her alone. I just wanted to let you know that he has been back over here and I don't want you to come disturbing me. So I, I'm letting you know, just as communicating, you know, I've been harassed her. So this is very, this is very disappointing to be going through this situation. Okay, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay, and uh, I, I do not have any uh, follow-up yeah. questions either. Uh, so thank you. Uh, unless Ms. Jackson, there's additional testimony you'd like to give at this time. I do not. Okay, then you may step down from the witness stand. Um, any um, additional witnesses or evidence you'd like to present, Ms. Jackson? Um, and I did not receive your letter yet or the attached uh, evidence, so I haven't reviewed that um, in connection with the, today's hearing. It sounds like most of that goes towards it might support a protective order on your behalf. <laughs> Um, it was again, denied. I, I actually tried it. Okay. For some reason, they denied it, and I'm going to try again. 
Well, and sometimes with a protective order, I can tell you uh, it's as straightforward as Michigan law does not allow what we call reciprocal protective orders and that I can't say, well, one on you and one on her, um, that, uh, you know, you have to have a separate basis for it. But if you send in the evidence, then I'll consider that uh, like I consider all of the submissions. Well, farewell. Uh, we'll do. We'll do because I have to be safe as well, sir. All right. Uh, then I think we're to the time for uh, a closing statement. A closing statement, Ms. McNabb. Um, actually, Your Honor, would I be permitted to call Ms. Cooley as a rebuttal witness? Just briefly. Uh, you may. Uh, Ms. Okay. Cooley, you do remain under oath. You may take the stand again. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Cooley, you've heard Ms. Jackson's testimony, correct? Yes. Okay. And she alleges that you were at her home on Sunday. Were, were you near her? I was never near her home. There's Sunday. a police report with it in it. I'm, Man, I'm talking, ma'am. I'm let, talking, let let her ma'am. Go. There's a police report. So before you lie, just be honest. I'm I'm talking, ma'am. Okay. Yep. You'll get a so, chance to ask her questions again. Did you it. recently go anywhere near her home? So I told you Monday, I went over to her home, went over to Wingate Apartments. Never did I go to her home. I called the authorities on my ex-husband. And that's when the police, I called the police and went towards that way with the police. It was my premises. Against my husband. She has <laughs> nothing to do with nothing. It was my premises. My premises. He was here. Nobody was, was ever near your premises. Okay. okay. Uh, what is Ms. Ms. Jackson, premises. I'll give you a chance to ask questions. I'm sorry, after. sir. She's just lying and it's not fair. We're on court. How are you lying? This girl is the lawyer. Hang on. Lawyer. We can only have one person talk great. at a time. Okay, uh, sir. You're right, Your I'll, Honor. Yep. I'll have you hold off, Ms. Jackson, but I'll give you a chance to ask questions after Ms. McNabb's finished with her questions. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. McNabb. And Ms. Cooley, why did you call the police? I called the police because my ex-husband took some expensive belongings from my home. I was taking my niece to Wingate Apartments to apply for an application. And when I got towards that way, I synced his car there. So I called the police while I was at Wingate Apartments and the police came towards that direction. They knocked on my door. I gave, I'm not talking to you. They knocked okay. on my door, Your Honor. So you were not there to have any, you were not there with no, anything I having to do with Ms. Jackson. To, no, I never went to her premises, ma'am. This girl okay. is making up a whole delusional story. The police report will verify this is pretty scary. You want to lie like this. Right. Girl, shut up. I'm going to give you a chance, Miss Jackson. It's, it's just it's crazy, you know? It's crazy, Your Ms. Honor. Jackson, you know? I'm going to need to mute you, though, uh, if you keep it kind of cutting oh, into Lord. the testimony because it... Uh, all this gets recorded and it becomes part of the record in case either side wants to appeal my decision at the end. Uh, so I only can have one person talk at a time. Fair enough. I apologize. Okay. You uh, may continue, Ms. McNabb. And Ms. Cooley, um, how, how do you know that Ms. Jackson is the one who sent you those text messages? She called me from the number 50 times. Okay. She and called me from the number and not only that, she texted me the stuff. I had her on the phone with the police. I merged her in with the police talking on the phone. Okay. And and you recognized her voice? I know her voice, yes. Okay. She's How called many... me a million times. She's delusional. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Okay. And Ms. Jackson, do you have any questions that you would like to ask Ms. Cooley at this time? Your Honor, I just want to say Ms. Cooley did not actually come to my door, but she was in my parking lot. I have a parking lot and the police did not allow me to pretty much even leave my <laughs> home. She was on my premises. She's lying. And I have a video of the officer who she, you know, spoke with and the officer just pretty much confirmed. She said, I did inform Ms. Cooley that it doesn't look good for her to be at your house on your premises when she has a PPO on you. Those were her exact words. And I can very verify that. I can verify that. Okay, any other questions, uh, Ms. Jackson? Nope. All right, any further, Ms. McNam? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, then thank you, Ms. Cooley. You may step down from the witness stand. Um, okay. and, uh, any rebuttal or additional witnesses at this time, Ms. Jackson? Ms. Jackson, any additional witnesses? Um, I don't have any present as as now, I didn't know if I would need them right now, but I do have relatives. I have family who was very familiar with this situation. So, you know, if that's a future thing, I will have them, but as of now, no. Okay, all right. Well, then I think we're to the time for the closing statement, uh, Ms. McNabb. 
Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Cooley has testified that she received several calls from Ms. Jackson on December 31st. Um, she has testified that she recognized her voice on the other end because she had heard her voice over the phone many times. And she has testified that she received that threatening text message from the same number that called her. She was um, just at my house March oh. 8th. She was just at my house March 8th with clothes. I have yep. her on camera with her face. That's not up. me. That doesn't show my face like it shows yeah. yours. Ms. McNabb uh, is, is speaking now. Let's let Ms. McNabb make her closing statement, and then you're going to be able to make one, Ms. Jackson, and then we'll be finished. Okay. And Ms. Cooley has also testified this has been ongoing and continuous harassment. Um, I believe the court should find her, her testimony as credible um, and find that Ms. Jackson has at the very least violated the PPO once, if not more than once. Um, Mrs. Cooley has explained why she was in the vicinity of Ms. Jackson's home uh, on Monday that had nothing to do with Ms. Jackson, um, that she was doing something for her niece, and there was a dispute between her and her husband. Um, so the court should not take that into consideration. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Jackson. Uh, you're muted, Ms. Jackson. You'll have to unmute or I'll have to unmute you. There we go. Okay, Your Honor. I just last would like to say you know, it is not a thing on her ex-husband or soon-to-be ex-husband. If the police come to my home and actually knock on my door, there were three police officers she sent to my home because she's seen his vehicle at my house. If you ask me, that is a form of harassment. If you're driving past and you have a PPO on me and I haven't violated by contacting you and you just notice your husband's car and you sent him to my home and you're parked on the corner of my house, speaking with the police about the situation, it's harassment, it's manipulation. And I just feel like, how can I possibly live my life in peace with this woman antagonizing me on a regular basis, Your Honor? I will. I have no problem minding my business. I, I'm not confrontational. I don't have enemies. This woman has done so much to me. But like I said, I am in school. I don't have time to just sit here and document every little thing until it came down to this right here. I have the police report verifying that she was not at Wingate, that she was on my premises. If I'll be able to provide that, you'll be able to see that I'm not making the situation up. There, there was just, this was just a manipulation, you know, because she was upset about him being at my home. Okay. All right. Well, I have heard the, um, the testimony today. Uh, there haven't been any um, documents that were um, introduced into evidence on this matter. And the question is, is can I determine beyond a reasonable doubt that um, text messages uh, sent on December 31st of last year, that is 2023, uh, were from uh, respondent Ms. Jackson and second, uh, that uh, they uh, those messages violate the the personal protective um order at this time and uh uh miss miss jackson has denied that those were from her however um the testimony from miss cooley has been while well, i recognized her voice um on the on the phone uh and thus i knew it was her uh calling me um In addition, there were an allegation that there were some um, text messages uh, here uh, uh, following the uh, uh, the calls, uh, including uh, 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 one that uh, Miss uh, Cooley has testified to. Uh, you know, uh, uh, was in sexual nature involving her soon-to-be ex-husband. Uh, Mr. Cooley, I will note that Mr. Cooley is at the midst of this dispute, and of course, is not here today uh, testifying in either uh, things. You know, it, it, it strikes me that uh, sometimes uh, in these cases, a uh, man is the root of the trouble, and uh, the man somehow uh, misses out on these proceedings, even though uh, he may be as much at fault uh, regarding both parties as uh, certainly anyone else involved um, in the case. But that that being as it is, uh, I still do have a protective order in place that protects um, uh, Ms. Jackson and, or I'm sorry, Ms. Cooley. And I will find at this time that there has been evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that those texts and or calls on that date, uh, December 31st, uh, prove that uh, Ms. 
uh, Jackson did violate the protective order. Now, I'm not going to impose any uh, jail time uh, or fines as part of the sentencing. What I'm going to do, Ms. Jackson, is I'll send you a letter um, uh, indicating that you need to go down to the Kent County Sheriff's Department and get fingerprinted uh, because I have found that you violated the order. And I will tell you, if you violate it again, and that would be by either uh, being you know, any of the violations. You can't be at her property. You can't text her. You can't call her. You can't go from an unknown number. But I mean, if you're sending a, a picture that's sexual in nature, that you would be the only one that might have the uh, possession of, uh, logically, uh, she's going to uh, determine and probably be able to convince me that that was from you uh, and be able to bring you into court here again. And next time, I certainly, uh, having had you fingerprinted this time, uh, might consider uh, putting in jail, though I'm not going to do that um, this time. On the flip side, I will caution that no matter how irritated um, Ms. Cooley is with her ex and, uh, you know, maybe stealing stuff and uh, sounds like he certainly is adept at, uh, uh, you know, kind of playing uh, the two women involved in this matter off against each other, uh, that nonetheless, um, you, you know, the uh, protective order when it's in place, is intended to be a shield that is it protects you but it's not a sword it doesn't give you a, a blank check to do whatever you want um with regard to miss jackson and so uh you know i would agree with uh you know what was alleged to be a police officer's uh statement today that uh uh you know that you shouldn't probably uh be over on her um property you know if you need to call the police and you think that's where your ex might be and might be located well uh you certainly uh usually i, I don't find that police contact uh and calling the police uh is usually the a good basis for a protective order and that's because when the police officers do arrive um it's not direct contact between the other person and the respondent or whatever it is uh you know the police officers exercise their own discretion when they get to a scene and investigate so uh you know um uh you know it, it may be that the police get called because there are legal proceedings there's a divorce case apparently and others ongoing between um miss cooley and her soon-to-be ex-husband and uh you know he seems to be kind of drifting maybe between two different locations maybe more uh, where he is staying uh and certainly be seems to be playing a role in this and uh acknowledging that uh, you know, and I, there's no way that a protective order uh, orders the two of you to be friends or to have a good communicating relationship with each other. I don't expect that to happen. However, I do expect both of you to kind of, you know, I, I say it's um, like the referee in a boxing ring where he, you know, says to the, the two uh, boxers, you know, each of you go into your own corner, uh, neutral corner and stay there. Uh, don't uh recommence uh the fight until well <laughs> don't recommence the fight how about that uh, but definitely not while the protective order is in place because while it's in place uh at least with regard to you miss jackson you are correct in your assessment that it isn't fair you're the reset you know you're the respondent uh you've got everything to lose uh whereas you'd have to convince me um you know on the flip side that uh, miss cooley was more to blame than you were uh if an incident did happen your safest course of action uh, to protect your studies and um, your life that you're building uh, entirely separate, it appears to be uh, from Ms. Cooley, is just, uh, you know, stay uh, uh, out of sight and out of contact uh, with her. And even if you get angry uh, at Mr. Cooley, I don't know if he's still involved, but uh, do not use uh, Ms. Cooley as a way to, to reach him. Uh, you got to figure out a way to uh, get to him directly if that's still an issue between the two of you. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have to decide that today, but don't use her as the go between because of the, uh, existence of this protective order. So, uh, I'll send you a letter. It'll give you a couple Saturday mornings when you can go down to that sheriff's department. I say to people when they do that, uh, take a look, you know, you're only going down there for a visit. You're not going to jail. There's nothing, uh, you know, criminal about it. This is a civil case. You're just giving your fingerprints. However, um, if I do find you in violation in order to go to jail after a hearing, uh, that's where you'll wind up and it'll be uh, for several nights, uh, you know, as uh, punishment for violating the court's order. Uh, I'm not doing that at this time. Uh, most people uh, take the warning the first time and say, you know what, I don't want to spend any more time than I have to. 
uh, here at the Kent County Jail or with the Kent County Sheriff's Department and uh, don't don't have any problems. But the order does remain in place and I will uh, uh, caution both parties to continue to uh, observe uh, the order. And as I said, it is a, uh, a shield and not a sword. So uh, that is the conclusion of today's hearing. Uh, I will thank both parties for appearing uh, by video today, arguing your case and also participating in this. Uh, I haven't seen, as I said, your evidence, but I will review it if it comes in, Ms. Jackson. And if you've applied for a protective order, I do consider each one of those as they come in individually. If you can support one, uh, you may be able to uh, qualify as well. But in any case, what, what the uh, court process indicates to me is that you're both willing to go through this legal process, even though it's slow and uh, not always very satisfying as a way to, uh, uh, you know, defend your, uh, you protect your rights and protect yourself uh, rather than taking it in person or via, you know, each other's families uh, to each other, things like that. That's exactly what protective orders are designed to do is to get people into court and not uh, you know, coming to blows with each other in the street. So uh, you're both respecting that process and I'm grateful for that. Uh, I will send out the follow-up orders, and with that, we're concluded. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.